Hi everybody, Rem Malloy with ItalyForReal.com for lesson three of planning your Italian vacation. Let's begin. I do want to remind you that these classes are online anytime. And if you are attending one of our classes in the United States in person, you can always come to the web for a refresher course. These classes are free and available to everyone. Go to ItalyForReal.com, go to our homepage at the top, News and Events, and then on that page, Travel Classes. So check them out anytime you like. Let's begin. So in uh, lesson three, we're gonna cover some great topics here for planning your trip to Italy. We're gonna talk about travel insurance. We're gonna cover health warnings for Italy. We're gonna talk about learning the language. We'll also talk about types of accommodations you can find in Italy and a new trend for Americans, agriturismos. So let's get started. So let's talk about travel insurance a little bit, um, very quickly. There are three parts of travel insurance that everyone needs to know about. There's baggage loss, there's medical, and there's trip cancellation and delay. And the most used part of travel insurance, amazingly enough, is trip cancellation and delay. I can't remember the last time one of my clients was sick and had to cancel their trip or lost their bags. And so, you know, but I do know that each year, dozens of our passengers are delayed by airlines or their bags are delayed by airlines. And travel insurance will uh, help you get your bags to your destination and give you an allotment to spend uh, for toiletries and clothes and things like that uh, when you arrive. So uh, it's a great benefit for trip cancellation and delay. Cancel for any reason policies. The, uh, travel insurance companies nowadays are offering policies that cost a little bit more, but you can cancel for absolutely any reason and get your money back. Uh, I would recommend never leaving home without travel insurance. You can find out more details and book online at italyforreal.com. So let's talk about health warnings for Italy. Currently, uh, you know, people ask, is it okay to drink the water? You know, they compare, you know, I'm going to Mexico, I couldn't drink the water there, can I do it in Italy? Of course you can. Uh, Italy, you can drink the water out of the taps in the hotels. As a matter of fact, in Rome, you'll walk around with fountains and there'll be fountains where you can refill your water bottle throughout the city. That's a great way of saving money during your trip as well. Health warnings for Italy, there are no health warnings for Italy. Go, uh, have fun. There are also no required vaccinations for Italy. So just make sure that uh, you enjoy yourself, eat uh, comfortably, drink the water, don't worry. Learning the language in Italy, ah, parli italiano? Uh, this is, uh, you know, why does Italian sound so familiar to us? It's because it's Latin based. So restaurant, restaurante, pharmacy, pharmacia, uh, bank, banca. It's very familiar to our ears. So when you get over there, you'll, you'll start to learn and hear things and they'll be familiar to you and easier to understand. We recommend learning the basics for Italian only. Don't go to your local university and sign up for the in-depth course unless you're gonna move there. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're gonna be succumb to what's called the shotgun effect of the Italian language. And that means that, say you take the big class and at the university and you're all ready and you're, you've gotten pretty good, you get over there and you say something, well the answer is gonna come back to you so fast that you, your jaw is gonna drop and you're not gonna be able to, to speak. Italians speak very, very fast. And so we recommend just learning the basics, left, right, where, thank you, good night, good morning, things like this. And as you get there, you'll learn along the way and you'll catch up more and more. If you go to italyforreal.com, uh, we have some travel products for learning the language. We have some CDs that we recommend uh, to, that you learn. And we do, we do say learn language about 30 days before your trip so it's fresh in your head. Okay, let's talk about types of accommodations in Italy. There are several different types of accommodations and they all run on a five-star system. Now, there's also no such thing as B&Bs or bed and breakfast in Italy. They're called other things like pensions or agaturismos. If you see advertising for B&Bs in Italy, they're probably just catching on to that term, uh, but there's really, they're really called agaturismos, pensions, things like that. Now there's a scale right here between one and five stars and we recommend the best value for your travel dollar usually floats in the three star range. Sometimes four now that the economy has adjusted prices a little bit, but those are gonna be your best bet. And uh, the experts at italyforreal.com have inspected over 5,000 hotels and we have a database of 
fully inspected properties. One of the things that, that ItalyForReal.com does is we actually travel to Italy and look at the hotel. So we know the difference between room 104 and 105. And we make sure that our clients get the best quality products and hotels when they book with us. So give us a call and we'll, we'll hook you up. So, you know, one of, the, one of the new things that are going on in Italy right now is called Agora Turismos, and it's very new to American travelers. Many people haven't heard of them, and it's basically agricultural tourism. Like that and have apartment style or hotel style accommodations. And what that means for you is it's gonna be a genuine experience to stay on a working uh, farm or production of organic uh, materials in the countryside is the most unique and enlightening experience one can have. Now sometimes agriturismos are very nice, like this one that we know of outside of Cortona, but sometimes agriturismos can be not so nice as, as this one here. Um, you know, agriturismos can be beautifully well-maintained and gorgeous places to stay, and they do offer more value for the money. Uh, because in a hotel, you have a 10 by 10 room with a front desk. When it, at Agriturismos, you'll have sometimes a kitchen and mountain bikes and places to park and hiking trails and all types of amenities that you normally find at a resort you'd find at most Agriturismos. There is a catch. There's a couple of catches. One of the catches is they are all out in the countryside and you must rent a rental car. Uh, no agriturismo is going to be on a rail route. Now agriturismo is if you are in Italy and you want to find one while you're there, the tourist information offices in most towns will have a list of agriturismos. But then you only get the name and the address and must drive out and inspect them yourself. In the United States, ItalyForReal.com is the number one place for a database of agriturismos. We've inspected hundreds of them. So if you're interested in agriturismo stay, please contact ItalyForReal.com and we'll get you taken care of. Again, personal recommendation is another way. Ask friends or family, have they ever stayed in agriturismo? And that's a good recommendation as well. This is the end of lesson three. Thanks for joining us. I want to tell you about some great things that are going around at ItalyForReal.com. We do wonderful group travel. We have a great group travel department that can handle groups between 8 and 200 people uh, and uh, design trips all around wonderful uh, interests that the group may have. We do Italy honeymoons, these customized packages just for two people that are geared around romance and love. Please check out our website. You'll see them there. Italy weddings, we organize destination weddings from bottom to top, including all of the services for civil, ceremonial, and religious weddings. Also travel insurance, that's available up online as well. So thanks, this is Rem Malloy for, with ItalyForReal.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll check you out on lesson number four.